Hello, podcast listener. You have stumbled on a great episode of JJ Meets World. Our guest is Shannon Weedman, and we talk about ghosts, pickles, and her battle with cancer. Some amazing heart insight in this episode. It's going to make you think, might make you cry a little bit at times too. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Plus, Tucker and I talk about the need for strategically placed cup holders in vehicles. All of this and so much more on this episode of JJ Meets World. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. This episode of JJ Meets World is brought to you by Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty. Natalie has a proven track record to get your home sold faster and for more money. She is consistently focused on her clients' needs and wants throughout the entire process and make sure that they are well taken care of. If you're looking to buy or sell, reach out to Natalie today. On average, Natalie sells a home every 3.74 days. That's at least two a week. And last year, Natalie earned her clients on average over $4,000 above list price on their homes. And you don't have to take our word for it. Here's some of the great reviews Natalie has received. I was overwhelmingly impressed with Natalie and all the Hatch team. She was very responsive and responded to all of the emails within an hour. She gave great advice and encouragement from the listing and pictures, the offer and all the closing details, the marketing team knew exactly how to promote my property, and I was pleased by how soon and easily my property received an offer. I was actually dreading selling my condo, and Natalie did such an awesome job that I felt like I really didn't need to do anything. The thing I most appreciated was that she really listened to what I wanted to do and respected my decisions. I would definitely recommend Natalie and all the Hatch Realty team. They made this process so wonderful. That was from Diane. So listen, if you're in the mood to buy or sell a home, give Natalie a call right now. You can reach her at 701-388-9338, Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, at hatchrealityfm.com, or you can go to livefargomorehead.com, that's live. FargoMoorhead.com and find out some information. Huge thanks to Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty for sponsoring JJ Meets World. One, two, three, four. JJ Gordon, sort of like that Indiana Jones in that he's always snipping out his next adventure. Yes, he is. He's always interviewing guests so he can have them on his show and they can talk about pop culture, arts, and leisure. JJ has his flag unfurled and he likes his french fries curled and he's fun and then he twirls as he goes to meet the world. He will march into the rain even if his ankle sprain. Take a peek inside his brain. This podcast is called JJ Meets World. On uh, Thursday, <laughs> a cell phone went off during a last poor Yorick. Like the scene. I've got the goddamn skull in my hand. And I go, alas, poor Yorick. And then it's like the, oh, oh, I, oh, I, this is embarrassing. I usually turn this off. I got to get this. I'm really sorry, everyone. It's like, why, why are you talking right now? Stop it. You're making it worse. You're already making too much noise. Don't make more. Just silence it. Um, So I just had to keep talking to the skull while it was going on. It was infuriating. We had... I remember it was the second weekend of Santa land. We had like five people who arrived late, like 15 minutes into the show. And they came in and they, they looked at me and they go, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, don't worry. It's no problem. We're all friends here. Let me catch you guys up real quick. And I stopped like the show it like in character. I stopped what was going on and I like told them what happened. I'm like, did I forget anything? And someone yells in the back, you love days of our lives. And I'm like, how could I forget? I also love days of our lives that might pay off later. And uh, somebody asked me later, they're like, who are the other? Why, why are those people not in the program? Like the, the plants. And I'm like, that wasn't a plant that happened. It's like the day uh, I cut my arm open. So proud of that show. It was awesome. So fucking proud of it. You should be so proud of Hamlet. I am. I, I am. hear some great things. I'm coming tonight. Oh, yeah? So I'm really excited to nice, see it. Nice. No, I, last weekend and this weekend, I've had some really incredible moments with audience members afterward. Yeah. That that felt truly genuine. Not like mm-hmm. there was like the Midwest, like, oh, you did a great job. Like, like they really got something out of it. And it wasn't until last weekend that I realized, oh, <laughs> this play is about grief. That's what they're responding to. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what we're leaning into. Um, like, you know, that first scene in the throne room, everyone's telling Hamlet, why aren't you over it yet? Get past it. Can't you please get past it for us? And like that is resonating with so many people mm. as they watch it, which is interesting. Anyways, 
it's time for me to get a new car. Um, I have, okay, so if I talk about my vehicles, I got a Mercury Mariner from like 1995 when, uh, no, it was a Mercury, it wasn't a Mariner, it was a Mercury Mountaineer that I got that was my mom's car. So when it was time for me to get a car, that was the hand-me-down I got. And I drove that for a lot of years. Then I got a, uh, it's not a Suburban, but it's like a Suburban, and it's the extra large version of it. It was enormous. Yeah, I've never seen you drive a small car, put no, it that way. right. So after I got that car, and I don't remember what that was because I ended up flipping it on the interstate maybe yeah. like two years after owning it. Also, I owned that when gas was $4 a gallon. <laughs> So good move, JJ. Every fill was like $130. So after that, I got um, a black SUV that was like supposed to be like a like the kind that a businessman drives, right? Right. But I'm still a kid, right? Right. So I'm like, whatever. Right. And then uh, after my mom passed, I took over her Mercury Mariner, which mm. I'm currently driving. But it is falling apart. There is a pipe hanging down from the bottom of it that I don't know where it goes. I don't know what's supposed to be feeding through this pipe. Is something coming out of it while I'm driving? Uh, you know, and I'm too lazy to bring it into the mechanic. So I've started looking for a new car. And when I went into the dealership, because I said, I'm curious to know what's there. I've never purchased a new car off the lot. I don't necessarily intend to, but I'd like to know what's out there and available. And he says, okay, so tell me what your wants are in this car. And I said, I would like to bring in uh, the mug, the coffee mug I normally use. It usually has just pop or water in it, but I'd like to bring that in to make sure it fits in the <laughs> middle console. Over. Yeah. And he looked at me like, are you <laughs> screwing around with me? But that was the first thing on my list was I want to make sure that the mug I, I've been using for the last couple months. Can it still play CDs? Fits. Oh, I would love to have a CD player in there because every now and then I get nostalgic for a CD. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so cup holders are something that's important to me, but I don't want too many because I don't want people to get too comfortable in my car. I used to, in the the big Suburban-like thing that I drove, I wish I could remember what, what that, it was GMC something, but that had like 12 cup holders, and people would leave junk in it, and that would piss me off. I hate that. So, for example, they'd be like, oh, I'm only half full, finished with this chocolate milk, I'll just leave it in there. Ugh! Because it'd be three weeks later, and the hot sun has been beating down on this chocolate milk, and it's to the point of where the <laughs> bottle itself has expanded. Like you can tell, like some kind of chemical reaction has taken place where there's been a gas off of inside of this chocolate milk. You um, need a refrigeration unit in your car. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Like something that could open from the top and between the two front seats, you could reach down in and pull out a nice cool diet coke i've also mentioned to like this guy i was like i would like something with like a screen in the back you know like something that flips down and goes oh do you have children i said no but if i'm waiting somewhere i wouldn't mind consuming some media did you ever see the barney movie yes okay do you barney's great adventure yes with the egg right mm -hmm. there's an egg that they're trying to protect or something do you remember the scene where there was a guy i think he might have been a truck driver or something but he had it set up in the front that he could make he could fully make a cheeseburger and a milkshake yep. and fries he had like an oil vat or something mm -hmm. up there and then it comes screeching to a halt and everything sprays everywhere i want that you want that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are cars missing that we should be expecting them to have at this point? Uh, electric motors. Just a, just straight up electric motors it's, like it's, the Teslas? It's, it's the kind of thing where, not to get too much on a, on a tear about this, but the only reason we don't is because of uh, corporate intervention. People who would not have benefited from them coming out, and so the technology got suppressed. So that's what we're now just getting to the point where... Uh, the cost is coming down. We'll be able to start buying cheaper and cheaper electric vehicles soon. I know that sounds like an, that's that's a non-funny, serious answer, but that is the thing that cars are missing these days is the fact that they are still reliant on dinosaur blood. Well, and you don't have to. It doesn't. Everything in this podcast doesn't have to be a joke. It'll be serious as well. You can have to have a serious moment here. In fact, this episode itself is rather serious but humorous at the yeah, same time absolutely shannon weedman is our guest today and shannon 
uh, has just undergone a major health crisis in her life. And so we talked to her about her cancer, how it started for her not feeling well, uh, progressing through today where she's going in for checkup appointments. This episode is could be pretty tough for someone to listen to who has had cancer directly affect their lives without a win. So if right. you have a loved one who uh, lost the battle to cancer, I think that this is a great episode for you to listen to because it's part of the healing. I'm in, I'm in that boat, but at the same time, it might be difficult for you to listen to. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of amazing humor in this episode. Yeah. We do a lot of laughing and we have a great conversation about pickles right at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, which Tucker does not like. So you heard Tucker talk about <laughs> why the electric car isn't big and why whether or not he likes pickles. You know, and even thinking about it, because we just recorded with Shannon, I bet only a third of the episode is specifically about going through cancer. Oh, yeah. I mean, we talk about ghosts at one point. Yeah. We, <laughs> we do a lot of weird dancing in this episode. <laughs> uh, good old fashioned tangents. In fact, someone told me, like, you know, if you drew a picture of a stick figure and then just like scribbled all over it, that's what an episode of JJ Meets World is like. Hell yeah. So let's take a hard turn right now. I don't believe alcoholic drinks should be hot. <laughs> I think you should put ice in them. So if you're drinking like a hot toddy, no, that's not my thing. Enjoy this episode of JJ Meets World with Shannon Weedman. JJ Meets World. Hello, Shannon Weedman. Welcome back to JJ Meets World. Hi. Thanks for having me back. Well, yeah, you know, it's always a fun time to see a familiar face. Uh, it's especially fun because we enjoyed the last episode you were on. I'm still waiting for some of your dad's pickles. Okay, listen, I was planning on bringing some today and I totally forgot when I was driving over here and I'm not lying about that. This is yeah. true. Okay, that's good. Okay. This last year we did a huge like pickling ourselves and yeah. so I'd like to trade. Oh, I would love to trade. Mm -hmm. Did yeah, you just, just pickle through. cucumbers or? Oh no, we did beans. I did beets for the first time this year. <gasps> eggs. We did like giant things of pickled eggs. Okay, I'd love to trade. Yeah, I okay. only have cucumbers. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. When does it officially become a pickle? Uh, does it t is it there's like some time there or is this? I figure the second I pull the put the brine in, it's a pickle now. That's a great question. The second you put the brine in, the second I put the brine in, mm. even though it hasn't officially pickled it, yeah, it is now a pickle. I can't undo what I've just done. Got it. It's going to be a salty cucumber. Yeah. For a little bit, and then it's a pickle. I'd say give her, I don't know, 10 you minutes. Think it's 10 minutes? <laughs> Just to wait. Because you've got like overnight pickles that you do in the fridge. And so it takes overnight for those to become pickles. It's in the name. Right. Right? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Opening with some pickle physics. Uh, yeah. Or some, <laughs> or some like pickle etiquette, maybe. Yeah. You know? I like when I bite into a pickle and it gushes and like it spurts in all directions. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Well, yeah. Hey, well, no, no. You just don't Anything like pickles? pickled is for Satan. Oh, mm. yeah. I forget. That's what I was trying to remember, too. I was like, I feel like Tucker didn't like pickles. Well, I don't, but I'm not against you guys talking pickle talk. Could you leave the room, please, while we finish this conversation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that he's gone, <laughs> I've been feeding him pickles all night. <laughs> Yeah. Do you, do you um, like him? Oh, he's got horrible diarrhea now. <laughs> it's just the worst. <laughs> um, so, Shannon, since the last time you were on JJ Meets World, you've had some pretty major life changes, huh? You've been on a journey, so to speak. Yeah. Would you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, let's see. I um, lost all my hair, so that was that's crazy. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, back in August of last year, um, instead of making a baby, Adam and I made a tumor in my uterus. Mm, interesting. Yes. Uh, very rare. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of what happened. So. Um, yeah, it turned into cancer and it kind of went through that, went through chemotherapy and I'm on the other side of it all now. How long had you been like trying for a baby and it wasn't working to like, how, like, how do you get from we're having a baby to like, oh, you got a tumor in your uterus? Yeah. You know, we were never really trying to have a baby. We were um, basically like, if it happens, it happens. So it happened and we were like, oh shit. <laughs> okay. We're going to have a baby now. Um, and so. So that happened and we kind of, you know, went through, I think it was like four, four weeks 
of, you know, like knowing we were pregnant and stuff. And then, um, and then things kind of went south after that. So, you know, we had sort of accepted that we were going to have kid and be parents and all of that. And then our world just kind of flipped again, um, and again and again, (laughs) kind of for the rest of the year. So my wife, we were married two months when she was like, I got a stomach ache and it hurts so much. And I was like, okay, well, let's go to the hospital. So we go to the hospital and her great uncle had died of pancreatic cancer that week. So of course that's what's oh, in your mind, right? Yeah. Like Because they do a little blood test and then they're like, well, we don't know what this is. It could be anything. So she was sent downstairs for an ultrasound mm-hmm. and getting an ultrasound when you're scared is terrifying because the technician can't tell you anything. But they're circling stuff and they're writing down and every now and then you hear a, hmm. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. Come on, tell me what this, what what are you doing here? What's the point? Like, what are you looking at? Yeah. So we go back upstairs. We're in this waiting room until the waiting room actually closes. Oh my God. And they're like, we're going to turn off the lights, but you guys can sit over here. There's still going to be some light here and we'll keep doing some stuff. So we are sitting there and it's the first time that we had been to the hospital together since we had been married. And my anxiety was through the roof, just trying to like, like, I want to take the pain away in the situation, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so we finally uh, get called into the office and he's like, okay, so uh, I think you have diverticulitis and by the way, you're diabetic. And she was like, what? And he's like, yep, diabetic, your blood sugar's through the roof. We tested it twice. You're diabetic. We're like, well, that's crazy and then she all of a sudden you know the guilt health is so associated with guilt in a lot of ways like Mm -hmm. oh i should have taken better care of myself i should have done this so we find out that she they diagnosed her as type 2 diabetic which is the one that you can kind of give yourself by eating too many cheeseburgers and cake yeah then we go but it's reversible right you can lose a lot of weight and your body can kind of get back into fighting shape (coughs) We go to an endocrinologist a couple weeks later, and she's like, nope, it's definitely type 1 diabetes. Oh, no. So we're like, oh, that sucks. We're like, but wait a minute. Isn't type 1 diabetes, like, don't you get that when you're a kid? And she's like, yes, a 35-year-old getting type 1 diabetes at 35 is extremely rare. So so did she have it her whole life, and or, or just it developed over time? It's a good question. No one can seem to answer it, because every time she's gone to the doctor since then, they don't believe that she has diabetes. They're like, no one gets, no one's gets diagnosed with diabetes at 35. And so they do another blood test. So every time we go to a new like sub genre of doctor, mm-hmm. they want to retest for the diabetes. And we're like, that's Trust frustrating. Me. Yeah. Also my Adam, my husband has diverticulitis as well. Oh, so it sucks because yeah. there's so many things you can't eat. Yeah. He's got to watch out, uh, you know, with the popcorn, mm-hmm. the corn, but, you know, he's rebellious and he'll oh, yeah. eat it. <laughs> and it worries me every time. So my dad owned a company called Dakota Natural Foods and they made Dakota Kids sunflower seeds and uh-huh. sunflower nuts and peanuts. And he was diagnosed with diverticulitis, so he couldn't even eat the thing that he oh. sold. <laughs> Why? Isn't that ironic? Yeah. For those of you listening who don't know about diverticulitis, it, it's like you have small air pockets in your intestines and... They don't hurt you, but the problem is, is that very small food particles like nuts, hard, sharp things can get in these pockets and then they can cause like a lot of discomfort and inflammation. So like even tomatoes, like if you eat tomatoes with the seeds in it, that can get in there and it sucks because now all of a sudden you're looking at crackers differently and you're like, oof, all they brought in were Whoppers and it's got those delicious sesame seed buns. I don't know. So should we try it? <laughs> Go for it. Roll the dice. <laughs> Turns out Jill does not have diverticulitis. That was a misdiagnosis oh. on their part. <sighs> yep. Yeah. But she does have like a, a spasming gallbladder or something. So that's what was causing her the stomach issues that day. Oh, Isn't that weird? Yeah. Health sucks. Yeah, it does. I hate going into the doctor. Yeah. It's there a couple weeks ago. I thought I was having a heart attack. I was home alone. I got up in the middle of the night and it was like I had labored breathing and I had a lot of chest pain so much so that I couldn't lay down with like on my back. Like it felt like there was something huge on my chest. And so I tried like working it around and I thought maybe I just need to throw up. Maybe I ate something bad for myself. I just need to throw up. So I try to throw up. I can't throw up. 
just giving myself the dry heaves the whole time. And I just, I was like, I was alone too. Is Jill had been out of uh, town. And so I thought they're going to find me in my underpants, <laughs> like next to the toilet. And they're going to be like, what's going on with this guy? Were you okay? Came to the ER. Yeah, I'm fine. The next day I woke up and I was like a million bucks. So do you think maybe your house is haunted? Oh, that <laughs> undoubtedly. Both of my parents died in my house. Oh, do you think mm-hmm. they were just sitting on your chest? Maybe. Maybe they're trying to warn me. <laughs> do you think it was your mom or your dad? It was Patty. Yeah, it was definitely my mom. <laughs> it was definitely Patty. Okay. Yeah, my dad wants nothing to do with the haunting of my house. He just is stuck there, as we know ghosts end up being. <laughs> do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't not believe in them. Do you have a ghost? Do you have a ghost experience in your life? Uh, well, this one time, this is weird. I don't know if, what, if this counts, but in my parents' basement it was where my room was and i remember like my brother was going to be coming home from college the next day and so i heard at like three in the morning i heard like the door from the upstairs open and then i heard like footsteps coming down the stairs like running down the stairs and then like coming right up to the door and i was like matt matt like you're home like it was so real that i was like you're home and you're being a weirdo because he's he is a weirdo just like we all are in my family um that makes sense but no one was at the door or no i was like the next morning i woke up and i was like oh when i heard matt get home last night blah blah blah. my parents like he's not home yet and i was like what so i never saw anything Mm. but i like felt something happen i don't know I have a lot of family members who purport to have ghost experiences, but they all involve them suddenly waking up and then seeing the ghost. And I'm like, oh. did you see a ghost? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you weren't sleeping? <laughs> what did you do after the ghost? Well, I went back to sleep. Yeah, you were sleeping. Mm. I think you were sleeping. So I have this question that I like to ask people. Um, mm. okay. uh, I like to ask them when I kind of first meet them because it's really awkward and weird, but I say, would you rather be haunted by ghosts, a ghost for the rest of your life or abducted by aliens once? Haunted by a ghost. Uh, Aliens, 100%. Okay. There's Mm. follow-up questions that I've got. 100%. I mean, now we don't know exactly what the aliens are doing to me. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't. So there is a lot of, to like, it's a dangerous choice to make, but aliens, come on. Yeah. Spaceship, please. Absolutely. Mm. You're not guaranteed to go into the spaceship. Well, if I'm abducted by aliens, yeah, the, the, just the implication ta- is that I'm going taken, into their spaceship. That just means you're taken by aliens. That's a good point. But, I, but I think the the if it's following the, the typical sorts of stories we get from people who claim to be abducted, mm-hmm. they go into the spaceship. Mm-hmm. So See, for abduction the probes, can last a long time. Right. You get probed. Ghosts aren't going to probe you. See, I don't know. what is What are aliens learning from my butt? Well, that's not the only part they can probe. Oh, I never thought about probe that. your nose. But even that, like, why are they like, let's pick an orifice and shove something <laughs> in there? Yeah. Don't you think they'd be more interested? Like, if we have X-ray technology, <laughs> you would think that beings that can travel through space would have something similar. See, what I want to know is why do ghosts not abduct people? Like, if ghosts are around, oh. you'd think they'd have the ability. So I've seen Ghostbusters. I can tell that they can manipulate physical objects in space. Right. So here's the thing, though. I have had many conversations with ghost enthusiasts about this. And my belief in ghosts begins and ends with one experience in my life. And then I think the rest of it is hooey. Uh, so, but they said ghosts can, uh, can interact with non-living things. So, uh, like if there was a door in the time of the ghost and it opened and clo- opens and closes it, you might be seeing sign of the residual of that thing and so it's not actually opening and closing that door you're just seeing like a a recorded version of that from history of it opening closing that door got it got it did you so i've there's plenty of stories when people who are under like emotional duress because of like medical stuff that's oftentimes when they'll see past relatives come to them or anything like that so did any spooky action happen to you when you know you were on your cancer when you started your cancer journey uh no like shit i was going through enough like i don't need to be haunted (laughs) yeah no shit (laughs) no kidding right (laughs) like come on give give a girl a break how inconsiderate of these ghosts (laughs) no i i wasn't haunted at all no i don't think (laughs) were you okay abduction or haunting oh you know 
No one ever throws this back at you? No one's ever thrown it back at me. Um, (laughs) Well, gosh, you know, I think I'm going to go with haunting. Haunting. Because I feel like if I'm going to be haunted for the rest of my life, I could turn that into a friendship of some sort. Mm -hmm. Or I'll go like the Dietzes and Beetlejuice and I will make a theme park around it and be like, give me some money. Everybody give me some money. That's part of the kicker though, is it's for the rest of your life versus like one abduction and then you're you're done. Okay, so here's a follow up, Tucker. Mm -hmm. What if Mm -hmm. an alien baby landed on your doorstep nine months later after your abduction? And I'm I'm a mommy? Absolutely I would take that baby in. Are you kidding me? Yes, I'm a mommy. I've got to. Okay, this alien only eats pickles. Ah, uh, you know? It needs brined it gets, uh, it green gets that vegetables. from his father. <laughs> uh, Shannon, do you want to know what my icebreaker question is? Yeah, I okay, do. Okay, get ready, because okay. this one's going to blow your mind. Okay. You are colonizing Earth 2. You are on the last ship off of Earth 1. We've ruined the environment, plus there's aliens that are arriving. It's a bad deal. You realize that they have miscalculated the amount of space they need so that we can repopulate Earth 2 to be exactly like Earth 1. And you can only bring the vial that contains the genetic information for lemons or limes. (laughs) One of these is going to get left behind and eradicated. Okay. Do you save lemons or do you save limes? Uh, Limes. Yeah, me too. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Woo. Yep. We are in consensus <laughs> agreement. I can't imagine a world without a lime twist in my gin and tonic. Yeah. Yep. And like, I'll get used to limeade. Yep. Right. Yep. Limeade is fine, and you know yeah. what? Green. I'd pick green over yellow. Right. I mean, there's just so many things. King House will have lime chicken. Yeah. 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 Just it's fine, right? Like and, to change anything. that book to limeade snicket. Mm-hmm. Easy. <laughs> Easy. You can tell your great grandchildren about like that time that you had a lemon. <laughs> Maybe they become our currency. Maybe one person sneaks one lemon on and it becomes currency. What would we call it when we buy a car that's not worth it? Would you call it a lime? Uh, you call it like a gremlin. Like you just you'd mm. figure out a different thing. You'd be like, oh, I but got but that's an screwed. actual car, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and it was a bad car. <laughs> so yeah, a lemon. I mean. I can't think of any. I'm not a lemon dessert fan, so I can't think of anything I'd want to save the lemons oh, for. Oh, I hate lemon. Yeah, lemon. it is really. They put oh. that in your water, See, and I'm I don't, like, I don't take hate it away. Lemon. I just don't like it nearly as much as lime. But you two both hate lemon. Well, I don't like a what was it? Lemon ring pie or lemon bar? No, really? Shannon, no. we are the same. Yeah, best friends for life. And it's the worst when it sneaks up on you and you don't know there's like yeah. lemon. Like this one time, I had this piece of cake, you know, and it had like a little layer of lemon hiding inside it. No, I can't. I know uh, it's the worst went, thing. It's like taking something that's so delicious and just ruining it. I remember eating <laughs> some pasta in Florida. And when they brought it to me, there were these four large lemon wedges on there. And it was clear that plate had been sitting long enough for those lemons to like seep out into my pasta. And so is a lemony tasting pasta. And I'm like, Ugh, this is awful. And he came by and he goes, Oh, you're not eating your pasta. Is everything okay? And I said, I'm actually not a big fan of lemon. And he goes, Oh, <laughs> Nice. His concern evaporated. Oh. Right. Oh, oh, you're a garbage person. That's what he uh. was thinking. So I was like, I would like to choose whether or not I consume lemon, sir. I, it is a big pet peeve for me when water comes with citrus in it. Like, just oh. give me water. Yeah. I don't want it to be flavored with anything. Just you give know, me water. I've got a question kind of relating to what you just said for Tucker. So what if you order a sandwich with some fries mm-hmm. and a pickle comes on the plate? Oh, I've just I just give it to someone else. Like, but it's okay. What if the pickle has touched that's okay. some of your fries? No, that's fine. Like the okay. like the sort of the dill flavor or whatever other flavor kind of comes off of it. It's not as much the flavor that bugs me as the whole pickle itself. Biting into it, all of that is gross. Okay, um, but no, I, that doesn't bother me at all. And usually, it's it's a great moment for me to go, hey. Who would like my pickle? I really benefit a lot from his sandwich, yeah. like s- situations like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I think it's a bold move to put a massive spear of a pickle in there too. Like, there's a good chunk of the population that does not want that shit. It's tradition. Let me. Okay, so you know what people you need to grow up. People do this to me all the time, and it pisses me off. Do you? Uh, you ever have like vinegar and, and stuff you eat, like salt and vinegar chips? Oh, or? No, only when I accidentally buy it. When I think I'm getting sea salt chips, and instead yeah. I'm getting salt and vinegar chips, and then I throw it away. So it what about gross. what about vinegar and other things like? Um, 
I don't know. <laughs> Something that Nate takes vinegar. Well, it you know it it really just kind of depends on the Do whole. Do you hate vinegar? Vinegar on its own, yeah. I think vinegar on its own is gross. And if the vinegar taste is overwhelming, mm -hmm. then it's gross. But I'm sure there are so many things that I probably eat that vinegar comes into contact in some way that I just don't. You just don't taste it anymore. Do you like salt? I do like salt. Do you like cucumbers just in general? No. Just period. You don't like cucumbers? I mean, they're fine. But like I, if it's on your salad, you're going to push them to the side? Usually. Mm -hmm. So I don't like mayonnaise. And I have some friends. I don't even know why I call them friends because they're assholes. <laughs> We'll say like, well, do you like eggs? Yeah. Do you like oil? Yeah. Right. Well, then you like mayonnaise. Right. Be like, nope. I all, like, for example, I like cheese graters and I like my genitals, but I don't like those two things together. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh don't yeah. be like that, guys. Yeah. Yep. Hey, don't be do like, like that. Don't knock it till you try it. Nope. I don't like the tangy zip of Miracle okay. Whip. I was just going to say as if like a one or the other, but. It's weird. I just have never liked it. And I think it's because people in this region of the United States, the upper Midwest, go too crazy with the mayonnaise. You put mayonnaise on a sandwich and it is a quarter inch thick. Unacceptable. The only time that I've ever had mayonnaise ruined for me was when someone diced up pickles and put it into the mayo. And I went, <laughs> the fuck is this? It was gross. Uh, it's called tartar sauce. <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe. Don't you put yeah. like... Uh, just like yeah, a relish like is just chopped up pickles. Right? In there. I don't know. Tucker's grandma ruined some perfectly good fruit that I bought her with mayonnaise once. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me tell you about the... Are you a vegetarian by any chance? No. Did you ever be... Were you ever a vegetarian? No. Okay, so I experimented with it briefly in my okay. life. And on one of those times, I went to Tucker's grandma's house. Yeah. And Don't go to someone's grandma's house if you're experimenting with vegetarianism. <laughs> I, but I was the last place you should be going. Yeah. I wasn't in everyone's face because I know Tucker's grandma makes amazing chicken and dumplings. I have had them before. They're great. And so on chicken and dumplings night, I thought I need to do something so I can still have dinner tonight. So I went out and I bought like Morning Star, like fake that's, sausages that's right. that's and so right. i get these sausages and then i'm like you know what i also love fruit i'll get a big <laughs> thing of fruit and we can have fruit for dinner and i'll have some of that and i'll have my morning star sausages and so tucker's grandma insisted in cooking for me and she understands and she's like i know that you're not eating meat so don't worry i won't you won't have any meat i'm not going to push meat on you so she serves up these sausages and i take one bite and i'm like something's not right and I was like, Mama Luke, thank you so much for making these for me. She's like, no problem. I cooked them with the chicken so the juices from the chicken would flavor the sausages. And I was like, damn. So then she's like, oh, and JJ, I made a fruit salad for you. And so she had taken an entire jar of mayonnaise and put it, it mixed it up with all of the fruit. And so I was like, well, looks like I'm not going to have any dinner tonight. I better load up on bread. Oh, well, did you eat any of it or did you just kind of like... I'm usually polite and I will do anything, but I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. I can't make it happen because earlier okay. on this trip, when we were driving to Mama Luke's, I had made the mistake of ordering mac and cheese off of an adult menu and I got through like four bites before I'm like, something's weird. Well, they had put bacon bits in it. <sighs> And what vegetarians will tell you is if they accidentally eat meat and your body's not used to it, I was up all night long having just the worst stomach cramps and like trying to get my digestive system back on course. It was awful. Weird. And I was in a guest bathroom, so it was a horrible situation for that. And ugh. and this is before like cell phones were really the main entertainment. So I didn't even text at the time. Oh, didn't have wow. any games on my phone. So it was just me sitting in a friend of mine bath mine's bathroom having a horrible just night thinking about what you did so mad at the restaurant which i believe is called like axel's bonfire it's in the twin cities <laughs> don't these people understand i'm experimenting with vegetarianism <laughs> well and then everything on the axel menu had meat in it and i thought macaroni and cheese i'm safe and i'm sure if i had done a deep dive into reading it but i took it for granted yeah Son of a bee. When, when I was going through chemo, I wanted to eat. So I definitely had like some like cravings and things I wanted to eat. And it was 100% just like salt. Like anything with salt. Like I was drinking V8s because that was like really good and salty. Uh, I was eating ramen noodles anytime I could get my hands on them. Uh, chicken in a biscuit. Uh, <laughs> goldfish crackers. 
uh, I don't know what it was, but like salt. And so you get to the hospital and you're there and I'm like ordering stuff and I'm like, oh, they have V8, great. So I order some V8 and realize that they only give you the low sodium shit in the hospital. (laughs) So that was a huge disappointment. I would not recommend low sodium V8 (laughs) at all. So anyways, we started bringing our own V8 to the hospital and putting it in the little fridge uh, down, like it was like shared fridge. And Adam didn't read the rules, but you're supposed to put a label on your, on whatever food you put in there, write what room number and put it in the fridge. Well, we got in trouble because he didn't do that. Um, but in the meantime, I asked for a V8. So he went to the fridge, grabbed me one. I opened it up, took a swig. It was the low sodium kind. He had stolen someone else's low (laughs) sodium V8 from like down the hall. And he felt so bad. So he like went and apologized to this old guy. (laughs) He stole his low sodium V8. Oh, man. The one thing that makes me feel like a person. (laughs) Gerald, I know you've been through a lot. You're here with a myriad of diseases being treated. You went through the Great Depression. You fought in two wars. And I just took your low sodium V8. <laughs> Gerald, I apologize. I wonder if he like tried to trade him. Like, hey, listen, I got the good stuff. If you want to, <laughs> I'll trade you straight up. You know, when my, my good friend Matt Burkholder, when he was going through his first round of cancer, um, and so he, and his was really bad, really aggressive. So he was hospitalized for a long time with chemo. Went to visit him once. <laughs> he told us about how um, because of the treatment he was going through, he was very restricted to what things on the menu they would let him have. Oh. They wouldn't let him have any fresh fruit and other things. For I, I couldn't remember what the reasoning would be. Mm-hmm. And so um, because he was a shit stir, he was like, well, you have mandarin oranges on here. That's not fresh fruit. That's processed. So I'd like some mandarin oranges, please. And they're like, no, you can't have that. He goes, well, well, it's not fresh fruit. They're like, well, right, but it's fruit. You can't have that. He's like, well, no, you said you said fresh fruit, right? It's fresh fruit, right? Yes. I would like some mandarin oranges, please. And it was a fight for like two days with the nurses. And finally, someone relented and they came up with a train. They're like, so you're the guy who's been looking for the mandarin oranges. He's like, yep. What else is on the menu? Ah, pickles. <laughs> and he moved to that. So he just took it as a way to piss off some nurses, I guess. Right. I mean, what else are you going to do when right. you're sitting there? Uh, uh, Might as well I, cause a ruckus. I have a number of friends who have gone through chemo, and one of the first things they always say is that it changes your taste buds. That it's so. What is what is happening? Is it like the it, the chemicals are just killing off taste buds, or what's happening? Do you know that sort of makes things taste different? I don't know specifically but it's almost like it like oozes into every part of your body is kind of how I felt really like I even felt like I smelled (laughs) and I don't know if I did or not but like it just like gets into everything is is what I maybe think like and it gets into your mouth a little bit so like everything starts to like you just have a bad taste in your mouth and so that probably messes with like anything you put in there my good buddy (laughs) bring that a bit closer to you uh, had a tumor in his tongue that they had to cut out. And then they're like, we are also worried it's in your lymphatic system, so we're going to do an aggressive <laughs> form of radiation for you. And I was like, Phil, I actually know what you're going to go through because that's what my dad went through. He had a tumor in his tongue, and we just thought he was really drunk for nine months. And Ooh. so, like, you know, his words are starting to get a little more slurred and... Finally, he was golfing, and somebody said, you need to go to the goddamn hospital today. So I tell Phil, one of the things that happens when you get radiation is you get a tattoo, and they put a little tiny tattoo wherever it is because that's how the laser lines up to make sure that it's radiating the same area every time. I didn't know that. Yeah. Crazy. So I'm like, Phil, you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery anymore. (laughs) That ship has sailed. Uh, yeah, because they're usually burying Catholics there. Well, you never know. He, maybe he's going to change. Maybe he's going to change. Maybe he's going to change. You never know. Pretty sure um, it's settled. But don't you want the options? <laughs> so then they build what looks like, you know, like a, one of the fencing. Like when you're fencing, you get that kind of like weird mesh mass. Yep. So it's like that, but it goes over your shoulders. And they actually bolt you in. They screw this thing down every time so that you cannot move. It's pre- you know, it's pressing against you so that you cannot move. So it's exactly down to like the, the sub millimeter. 
and then they do the radiation. So because Phil had it in his mouth, and I'm like, that's where my dad had it was in his mouth. You end it burns all your taste buds. Also, it like superheats up your fillings if you have <gasps> metal fillings, and so it can burn the side of your tongue too. Mm. So porcelain fillings, you don't have to worry so much. But Phil did have a couple metal fillings. So it gets rid of your taste buds, and the more you do it, the more like damage they become. And so by the end of Phil's treatment, which was I think four months long, he and I were spending every day together because we were working, we were building ticket booths for WeFest uh, all summer long. And uh, the only thing that he could taste were snap peas. It's the only thing that retained their taste. Weird. That umami. So he was, that's all he was eating. Like he would get like a five pound bag and that's what he would chow down on. And I remember he's a big Mountain Dew fan. And as his taste started returning and he was telling me like, I can taste Buffalo again. I so like wings. Yes. Uh, that sort of on the ramp up Mountain Dew, I think took the longest and it, I believe he said it had like a metallic taste mm-hmm. to it and he mm-hmm. just couldn't get behind it. But it is bizarre how things that, you just you are normal to you just change mm-hmm. when your body is going through that situation. Yeah. So Shannon. Yes. So you've been diagnosed, mm-hmm. you know, you're talking to doctors and nurses and stuff. You're going to the hospital, you're doing research. At what point did you and Adam feel like, Hey, we have a roadmap forward. We know what we have to do now. And so we're going to buckle down and do that. Cause it, it seems to me anytime Anytime I've been anxious about my own health, Mm -hmm. it was the unknown future. It was like, what can be done about this? I have no idea what can be done about this. So was there a moment where you that, okay, we've got a roadmap. It's going to suck, but we're going to follow it and we're going to see this through. Yeah. uh, So I was misdiagnosed twice. Um, So like when I initially went through my miscarriage is what they called it initially. Um, that's all they said it was totally normal pregnancy. You're fine. Go on your way. You can try again in three months. And I just never got better. My body never got better. I didn't feel right. I write the doctors and they're like, no, that can be normal. You know, like the things that I was feeling. And so it just didn't get better. So that was in September. I had surgery. October went by November Um, On Thanksgiving day, actually, me and Adam were going to be traveling and I just did not feel good. And so he's like, let's just go to the walk-in and just see, and then we can go. Well, then we went to the walk-in clinic and they did, my levels were through the roof. They did another ultrasound and they were like, you have really all along was suspected a molar pregnancy. And that was suspected at my first um, ultrasound that was again at my second ultrasound that I had had on Thanksgiving day. They're like, we need to do another surgery on the day after Thanksgiving. So we did another surgery and everything kept coming back normal. And so, but I had a different doctor now at the time and he's like, we need to follow up with you very closely because this is weird. This is not normal. And so then they kept following up with me. So this whole time I'm freaking nervous because I read like molar pregnancy can turn into cancer if it's not treated and it's not treated quickly. And so I'm, I mean, it, it really took a huge toll on like my mental health through this whole time. And then in, um, then I was referred, uh, no, sorry, they sent my pathology to Mayo came back positive molar pregnancy. So this whole time it was, and I, they just hadn't been treating me correctly. So it's hard for me not to think this whole cancer thing could have been avoided if that mm-hmm. I would have been treated sooner. But anyways, I got sent to an oncologist then that was scary. Right. Um, Cause I'm seeing an oncologist all of a sudden. And so, uh, but that doctor was amazing and he gave it to me straight. He's like, listen, this is the worst case scenario. He gave it to me. He's like, we don't know if it's that yet, but I'm going to tell you all of this. You're going to lose your hair. This all happened in December that he was telling me all this, but he's like, we'll follow up, you know, keep following up to make sure that, you know, your levels are dropping and everything. So we did a bunch of tests. We did MRIs. We did scans. We did all that stuff. And then he's like, everything's okay. So we're just going to monitor you. So then I'm being monitored January, February, March. And every week I get my blood drawn and my levels have to just drop. And then one week they went up. And I like this results would just hit my phone. And at that moment, me and Adam were on a trip and I saw it in the morning and I was like, my levels went up and we both knew that like, okay, it's time for chemo. And so 
that was a bummer day to kind of figure that out. But at least we knew finally that there was an end in sight. So then it was like game on. Like at, actually at that point, I was so relieved that I had a path that I was like, okay, we're going to give you chemo. And, you know, he had me scheduled. I have a chemo port. I still have it inside me, <laughs> my chest here, but we're going to give you a port. We're going to just start doing this. And my doctor's like, we're going to get on with it is what he said. Like he was just so awesome through the whole thing. So anyways, that was actually when I felt the most clarity was okay. when like you, there is going to be an end in sight. Here's how we can treat you. And then we, yeah, it's crazy. Do you, <clears throat> Is it hard not to have resentment against those doctors who you said, like, listen, I am not feeling right. And they're like, don't worry. We're doctors. We mm -hmm. know what's going on. Yeah, it's hard. I went through a lot of anger about that. Um, and, uh, you know, then you just reach a point where it's like it happened. It's over. And now I just know I think I just learned from that that, like, you have to be the, your advocate. Mm -hmm. Like, I should have fought harder. I should have you know, not to get down on myself either, but it's like, you really have to fight for your health. So ever since then, now I, anytime something doesn't feel right or whatever, I have doctors that are going to listen. Like you got to find a doctor that's going to listen to you. Even if, you know, you think you're crazy and you're like, Oh, well, this doesn't feel right. Like the doctor I found, I was like, I have a headache. And he's like, okay, well go to the, we're going to get this drawn, this drawn, this drawn. And everything came back fine. Cool. At least I can have like a sense of mind where I'm like, okay, I'm fine. So finding doctors that will listen to you and, and care when you're not feeling right. Cause you know, your body better than anyone else. So, so many, so many of us are afraid of <clears throat> annoying the doctor yeah. right? or being a pest. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, whatever, get over it. You know, yep. it's, it's better to be a, better to be, be annoying to this professional who's paid a lot of money yeah. to be annoyed by you. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm and, so annoying now. I good. love you it. Should, you <laughs> absolutely should be. Yeah. You absolutely should be. Um, my little sister had a baby in May of mm -hmm. this year and, uh, Dane, uh, it has a, uh, disease called MMIHS, which is a, a disease of like the, um, the smooth muscles that run up and down the, the intestinal tract and stuff. They don't twitch. So he can't move food oh. through. Right. And, um, in the past, this was like just 100% a death, right? This was like, you're going to die because you have it. And luckily we live in the 21st century where things are getting better and, and kids are dealing with this or not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, watching my, my sister and my brother-in-law live in a NICU for four months with their baby yeah, made me appreciate all of the health that I do have, mm -hmm. all of the problems that I don't have. Mm -hmm. And any time of day when I'm, you know, I'm stuck in traffic and I'm like, God, oh, come on, use your blinker, you asshole. You know, and I get all upset about something. <laughs> what do you, this isn't, this isn't the dark roast that I asked for. <laughs> then I think about watching my little sister standing over her baby with a bunch of tubes coming out of him. Mm -hmm. And it just puts it into perspective. And anytime I hear anyone who's gone through any sort of health scare, uh, that makes anyone that I've gone through pale by comparison. I just, I feel really, really grateful. And then also a bit more prepared because, mm -hmm. you know, health scares come to all of us at some point. Yeah. And knowing how to deal with them can be really, really tough. So I'm preparing myself to annoy the hell out of doctors. Yes. Left and right. Do you ever have a morbid moment where you're like, I'm going to do a bucket list or something like that, or I'm going to think about what I want to do if I only have a small amount of time? Um, I, no, I never thought that way. I think it was um, the the cure rate for this is like really close to 100%. I never really let my mind go there, That's good. which I think was good. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it, it was tough, like being in, you know, going to the cancer center, multiple times a week and seeing everybody that's, you know, in the waiting room or people that, you know, you see there, that's hard. Like, you know, and, and, and I, it was in those moments, I, I, it's so crazy. It's like, yeah, you have cancer, but the cancer I had was very, very treatable. So it's like it, it, you know, I could have had it a lot worse and people have it so much worse. And so I think it was just like being grateful. That's weird, but grateful that the kind that I had wasn't you know, that bad. Now this, this, this kind of cancer, is it merely because there was sort of a, a an accident in the pregnancy mm -hmm. and that's what caused it versus like a genetic predisposition or something else like that? Right. Yeah. So a complete molar pregnancy, which is what happened is when 
a sperm meets an egg that is doesn't contain any DNA. It's like a bad egg. Oh, okay. Um, and basically from there, the cells that develop the placenta, they're trophoblastic cells. <laughs> the cancer I had was called uh, gestational trophoblastic disease. And so these cells that form the placenta are the cells that kind of start growing out of control because there's no embryo. There's no, like there was no embryo in our case. And so it just like starts to create and like, and then they just become very invasive and they kind of like just make themselves a little home in your uterus. And yeah, so it's, it's crazy. And then there's another kind called a partial molar pregnancy when bad sperm meets good egg. So it's kind of a weird thing but. but i think it sounds like it was still a pretty dumb sperm like one of adam's dumber sperms like right. it could have been a smarter mm-hmm. one that was like oh this this one has no dna yeah, in it, it sounds like i mean you got the option of a dumb sperm or a rebel sperm good job like adam. a little little leather jacket wearing sperm yeah i was like <laughs> whose fault was this really mm-hmm. we went through that where i was like adam this is all your fault <laughs> i'd like a foot rub <laughs> listen yeah, isn't that weird? It's like we made cancer. Like it's not something that would have happened any other. It's just weird, right? Yeah. Who the shit thought that existed? Not me. I think that there's a lot of people too who like they'll end up with lung cancer yeah. and then find out like, oh, it's because you worked with asbestos for all of these years and be like, wait, nobody warned me about this. We didn't think asbestos was bad until like 1997. Yeah. And even today we're trying to bring it back. <laughs> They're like, nope, nope, sorry. It's what you did for your whole life. It's that career. It's that thing that you're so proud of, the watch you got from retirement. Yeah. That watch is literally killing you. Now, now not not to pry into whether or not you ever plan on having children, mm-hmm. but to someone who who's gone through this diagnosis, does that mean that they are more likely to have it again in the future? Or is it really just sort of like, no, it was just a one in a million chance because of that particular meeting of sperm with egg? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, not at not more likely that'll happen again so it's like we have would have the same chance as anyone else if it okay. did happen again that would suck but i have met women online that has happened a couple times um but no like women can go on to have successful pregnancies after this like it's crazy but um yeah it's they go through it and they can go on to have normal lives and everything and so, so you just said you know women you, you were speaking to online mm-hmm. um, my sister has been meeting other families with children with mmihs yeah and i think it's 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 been incredibly helpful to have that sort of um uh support group mm-hmm. so could you talk to us about kind of the the people you met because of of cancer basically yeah oh it was it's so great it's crazy like i searched um molar pregnancy on facebook and found a group And in this group, there's women from all over the world that are going through this. And it was so helpful because it's like, you know, you just the anxieties that you had, like going through it, like, oh, my levels went up this week. What's going to be my next step? And there's women who've gone through all different, you know, they've either had chemo or had a different type of chemo or you know, and, and it, being able to relate with them. And one woman on there, her name is Amber. She lives in California. She was shout just out like, to Amber. shout out. <coughs> she messaged me and she was just like, Hey, if you have any questions, like just send me a message. And so I just started bombarding her. I was like, I'm starting. Ke-. We went through the same chemo. We we're the same age. It was our first pregnancy, like same everything. And so I could really relate to her and she was able to help me through the whole thing. Really? Like, just having someone to be able to say, Hey, like what happened when you went in for chemo? What did it feel like? Did you get sick? Like asking all those questions. Um, and so that was super helpful. So that group, uh, is great. And just being able to connect with people. And, and I also met a woman, um, at the cancer center too. She was going through a different type of, um, cancer, but she just was beautiful. She had lost all of her hair. She's young. And so we were like walking back together one day and we just kind of started chatting and, um, I don't know. It's just, it's nice to have that connection with people because it's, it's hard when you're going through stuff like that to be able to relate. So, okay. So let's talk about losing your hair a little bit, huh? Like that's an interesting thing. Did you hold on to it as long as you could? And then one day is like, nope, it's time. Yeah. So, um, basically, um, I knew it was going to go. And so I went through my first round And then between my first and second round, it kind of started falling out. And I was like, okay, well, before that happens, I want to try out a side shave because like 
that's a cool thing that people do. Mm-hmm. There's no way I would have done it, I don't think, unless I was losing my hair. <laughs> you always had, you've always had really long, yeah. like, luxurious blonde hair. Thank you. So my friend came over, we shaved the side of my head, and I felt really cool. I was like, this is awesome. I look so badass. And then um, I think over the next week, it really started falling out where it was, where I still had hair. And so um, I think that was the hardest part was when I had to shave it all off. Um, It's like that first time with the side shave was like kind of fun, like, oh, fun, like, like it wasn't, didn't really hit me yet. And then um, my friend who I've been friends with like forever, she um, came over and cut my hair and then Adam buzzed my hair head, like something you never think, right? He like gives me haircuts now. Um, (laughs) uh, we, yeah, we've been through a lot, but he's been so amazing. So he, he would trim up my hair or whatever. And then it all kind of just started falling out and I got a wig and that was super great just because I wanted to feel normal. Um, and I think actually feeling normal is more for like everyone else to feel normal. I think half of it was like me feeling normal, but then making sure that everyone else felt okay. I think I did that a lot throughout the whole thing was just making sure that other people felt comfortable around me and didn't feel, I don't know. So that's such a common theme with mm -hmm. grief and tragedy, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's something you often hear that when people are either dealing with a life ending disease or they've lost family members in a very tragic, tragic, tragic way. Um, yeah. The, the, the notion that you have to be something for the people around you because you can sense their discomfort. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like people really not knowing what to say or whatever. And I always just use humor in those situations. And so like, uh, I'd say stuff at work, like someone would be complaining about something I'd be like, ah, at least you don't have cancer or mm-hmm. at least you have hair. Like I would say like these things and then I'd laugh and like walk away and then I'd be like, God, am I making things more weird? Like <laughs> when my, when my buddy Matthew was in, in, in the hospital going through chemo for the first time, he would, he would use it for comedic effect any chance he could get. Yeah. And he loved to mess with me. And so when I went to go visit him and I was having, I was struggling with it cause I was watching one of my best friends sitting mm-hmm. in a, in a hospital bed. Right. Um, and he goes, Hey, Tucker, do you want to see a magic trick? And I said, yeah, man, I do. Like, I, I want to be, oh, I want to be supportive. Yeah, show me a magic. You learned a magic trick. That's great. And he goes, he reaches behind his head and just pulls out a clump of hair and then drops it in what was left of his, like, pudding or something that he had. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> he laughed so hard. He thought that was the funniest thing. Yeah. It's easier for guys, I would obviously, because so many of us are used to short hair. Mm -hmm. Like if I had to go through chemo, losing my hair would clearly be the last thing that would bother me. Yeah. Right. So well, not me. I'm vain as shit. But JJ would have a lot of trouble with it. I mean, you got some nice hair. Thank you. And like my dad was a very bald man. And so like knowing that I'm going to hold on to this. Feels Which is weird good. because his beard is shit whenever yeah. he tries to grow no, it I out. I can't grow facial hair at all. Like it comes in in patches. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say my dad. So after my dad stopped treatment, like so they're like, sorry, there's nothing else. He had gone to Bethesda, Maryland, to the Naval Institute. And had been at Mayo, and it was at Roger Maris here in Fargo. And they're like, "There's just, there's nothing that we can do anymore." Was this from the the tumor? Yeah, the, he had, had a tumor in his tongue, and, and then, like he had okay. been, he was a drinker and a smoker, and he died at fifty one, like really young. And I think his dad had died at fifty of a heart attack. So I am on borrowed time. I always feel like I got to make it to at least fifty two. Like I tell Jill that all the time, but he used to do this thing. I think you've got at least to 73. You think so? That's just my feeling. At least to 73. Good. I'm trying to take better care of myself. I wish 20 year old JJ had started (laughs) taking better care of himself. You know, though, if you look at photos of 20 year old JJ and 36, 37, 36 36 year old JJ, you know, 20 year old JJ was doing okay at the time. He still had some pretty big man boobs. That's true. Yeah. But my dad had this thing (laughs) that I thought was so funny and nobody else thought was funny other than my dad is someone would come and visit and they'd be like, well, you know, JD, I'll see you next time. And he's like, maybe not. (laughs) And like, it was this moment where like, like, not that he had accepted what fate was, but sort of that like, be like, well, don't, you know, don't get caught up in life's bullshit because... I might not be here on mm-hmm. Tuesday. You know, if you say you're going to come, you better make that visit. And I thought that was so funny. And he was doing it just to 
just to lighten the situation a little bit, right? Because, mm-hmm. it, you know, you talk about being in the waiting room for chemo. I think one thing that is very sobering is you're you're seeing people who are, uh, you know, from rural areas. You're seeing people of all ages. You're seeing people mm-hmm. from all economic backgrounds. And you see how there is absolutely no rhyme or reason mm-hmm. to the individuals who are undergoing cancer treatment. And I think that is something that until you are in that situation, in that waiting room week after week, people don't understand it. And they Mm -hmm. think like, oh, well, this person got cancer because they didn't take care of themselves or this person got cancer because it's in their family. It's like, try telling that to an eight year old kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My first grade teacher retired from teaching and now she does art projects with kids while they're getting their chemo. And like, it's one of the sweetest things ever. A shout out to Mrs. Colstead, who is the bomb, (laughs) just the best first grade teacher ever. In fact, she lived in the building just next door to us. Um, but I think it's, I think it's interesting, like, and I'm sure a lot of people have come out of the woodwork to tell you like, oh, my dad had cancer or my sister had cancer and they try and relate to you or I, you know, or I had cancer and they try to relate with you in that. And you are part of a club now of, even though your journey is 100% unique and mm-hmm. your cancer isn't the same cancer that this guy had in his foot. But it's still you still kind of feel that kinship Mm -hmm. to each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been interesting. Just like people that I don't know, even like that are friends with family, you know, friends with my family members that have kind of reached out and sent me things and just like, you know, yeah, it is sort of like this group of people that, you know, you feel some you feel connected to even if you don't really know them, like even sitting in the waiting room and. Um, you know, with people that you've never really met, you just feel like, hey, like we're all here, you know, just waiting on a result or waiting on treatment or whatever. We're all kind of going through this, a similar, you know, challenge in life. And you just like kind of feel connected to people. When you're like, when you decided to finally buzz off your hair, does mm-hmm. it conti- does it grow at all during your chemo treatment or is hair like gonzo? Uh, there were like some weird little fuzzies. Like it was kind of like, I feel like baby bird type deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, some that down. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> some down feathers that started coming out. Um, but mostly it was just like gone. Um, and then like they say to, they're like, oh, when you're, you know, when you go through chemo, your hair falls out, it comes back like darker and like curly and all this stuff. Like you're the Phoenix rising. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Ooh, I can't wait. Cause like. <laughs> Spoiler alert, my blonde hair was never natural ever. Mm. Um, and so it came back pretty much how I how I thought it would look if I ever stopped dyeing my hair is like gray and um, all this stuff. So I had been kind of waiting to to dye my hair back to blonde so I could just like feel that because that was me, you know, before all of this, even though it wasn't natural. Um, and so, yeah, my hair is fine. You guys, you saw it here first. This, uh, this has taken like a few boxes of bleach. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks slick though. It wasn't easy, but here I am. <laughs> looks you, awesome. Do you ever, you know that song, like, I like the nightlife. I like to boogie. <laughs> like you look like the woman who sings that. If you got, what? if who you got that? the jumpsuit, you could do like, you got to see the video. It's an amazing music video. I okay. remember from pop-up video is awesome. Ha- have you figured out your Halloween costume yet? I was just going to say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Halloween. Um, I don't know. Adam wants to go as a, uh, piece of shit he wants to go as a giant turd (laughs) and so then he's like you can be toilet paper or you could be like a bull and we could be like bullshit and i'm like you know i (laughs) i don't even think that's a good idea and i love poop (laughs) yeah he's like i could like wear a brown thing and then like like put corn on me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm He's attached to this idea. Yes, he is. And he's really trying to now too. <laughs> he's trying to really force like a couple's costume and yeah. like, hey, well, you know, like, oh yeah, how about this? Why don't I just go as a gaping butthole? I would love <laughs> I would love to throw like a Halloween poop themed party where it's like show up in poop or or butthole. I don't want to go to that costumes. party because we're not the, invited then. One of the people who goes to that party is actually going to like put poop in stuff oh. and think it's funny. Like, oh, those weren't brownies. They were all poop. 
Like Dude, a, why are you giving them like an a outlet? burrito at WeFest? Like a burrito, uh, 10K. 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 Oh, was that yeah, 10K? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So um, I've got a lot of questions about the hair thing. So I'm going to okay. keep circling back to it. Yep. What about like leg hair? What about your oh, eyebrows? Okay. Did you lose any hair like that? Yeah, we can talk about that. So the first hair to go really was uh, my armpit hair. Yeah. And my private area hair. Mm -hmm. Um, And my leg hair never really left, which is kind of frustrating. Kind of a bummer. Right, yeah, like you think, like, like I get a uh, get out of jail free card for a couple of months. Yeah, this is the silver lining. Yeah, like get out of here. Um, but no, that pretty much stuck around. My eyebrows, though, started to kind of go a little bit. Um, so I like get this pen where I kind of draw them on, but they, never bad. Um, but then when hair started to come back, it is coming back full force. Like mm. I'm, I feel like my, you know, I even get a little mustache hair here and there. I feel like that's like coming in a little bit stronger. Like everything is just coming in a little hot. Hmm. It's like we've been hibernating and we yeah. got all the energy we've got. Yeah. We're going to give it, give it to you good. <laughs> um, okay. So First I had cancer. Now I got hair. Now I'm just real hairy. <laughs> so now what happens after today? Like, do you have to go in for a checkup every couple of months? What's the story? Yeah, so I um, they monitor my HCG level. So that's the level that basically like says you're pregnant or not, but that's the level that they've been measuring for me to make sure the tumor, because the tumor puts out that, that same chemical or whatever in your blood. So I get that monitored every month and just have to make sure that stays negative. And then um, I get an MRI every, I, I think like my neck, I have one in... Uh, a, a month or so to just make sure that that's still normal. I'll probably have one more of those, um, but I get monitored for a year. So till probably about June of next year. And then from there, um, I, I'm not sure what it looks like after that, but maybe like a yearly checkup and then I'll get my port out. That's going to get out in about a month. So that'll be nice, huh? Yeah. Just kind of a weird little nubbin. A little, love my boob. <laughs> little hitchhiker on your body. You're like, little, like weird little like, out of here. Boop, 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 boop. Maybe you'll miss it. Okay, so some people keep it. They keep their port. Uh, someone at work was like, my friend had kept hers and it's on her keychain. And I'm like, I don't know. Oh, like just at least in their possession, not like in their body. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so they like keep it. I think maybe I'll like put it in like a little jar with like, so it's like, you know, like those brains that people have. Yeah, you should put it in a jar of like apple cider vinegar because it, it would look kind of like. Oh my God, a pickled pork. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that'd be where it's at. I, I think that that's a good idea. I would love to see that actually at some point. So a new business. We'll, we'll pickle your old uh, chemo stuff. I remember as a kid. God, worst idea ever. I had a tooth pulled and I was like, oh, may I have it? And he's like, nope. I can't, it's medical biohazard, blah, blah, blah. I can't let you have the um, tooth. That is your tooth. That's what I think, right? You like, grew that. Yeah, that was from my body. Wow. So what'd you do? So I, I was like, I went home and I'm like, I don't know what to tell the tooth fairy. And they're like, the tooth fairy understands that you're not going to have this. And then that was the moment where I was like, I don't think that you guys are telling me the truth. <laughs> Otherwise, this dentist is just taking all of these teeth, putting them under his pillow, and he's like really racking up the dough. See, my parents never, I'm sorry, the tooth fairy never put quarters or silver dollars under my pillow. It was always in a glass of water sitting yes. on the counter. Did that happen to you too? Yes. So I guess because they didn't want to wake me up by, the tooth fairy did not want to wake me up by, I keep, keep using finger quotes like everyone can see it, um, to want to wake me up. So I'd have to reach my hand into some water for my it's two quarters. It's not like your parents were the thing from the Fantastic Four. It's like, I feel like you can reach under a pillow. No, and... I, I know. I, exactly. Right. That seems to be, that's what you would want to get. But no, it was always in a glass of water yep, for same. some reason. I don't know why in a glass seems of water. Seems lazy. Why but not you just know. set it next to, just, oh yeah, they just put it on the right, table next like, to you. Right, like take the glass. Oh, well, did you put your tooth in a glass of water? That's what I did. Yeah, same. Tooth in glass oh. of water. Tooth was gone. Money was in there. But still, why put the tooth in the glass know. of water? Oh, okay. yeah. You know, I'm going to follow up with mom and dad Good on question. that one. I mean, the tooth fairies. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tooth fairy obviously has a side hustle with my parents. And they're the ones who do the work, but the well, tooth right. fairy brings the money. It's just yeah. like Santa Claus, right? You Santa Claus needs some help. You got to well, compare right. with other kids and see how much money they got from the tooth fairy. Because then you can see there's an inconsistency yeah. in tooth there's value. A, there's a kid I knew who got a $50 bill for his first lost tooth. What? And I was thinking like, do you know how many teeth are in your mouth? 
Like, why don't you just get other kids' teeth? If you're yeah. getting $50 in the tooth fairy, you should be cashing rich. in mine and then... I'd like be wanting to like... I'd start yanking on a few <laughs> other ones if that be was... like, I really like Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> Buy that cartridge. <laughs> I... So, do you know what it means to aerate a lawn? Like yeah. when someone goes and like they take yeah. the plugs out of the lawn. And so it, it looks like a bunch of little poops. Little poops, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm walking home from school where our secretary has pulled one of my teeth out of my mouth. It's super <laughs> loose and wiggly. And I remember my teacher bringing me into the like teacher's lounge area and they're like, could you take care of this? And they're like, sure. And so they're like, they did the like on the count of three, one, two, yank. And so they pulled the tooth out and it was exciting. And they gave it to me in a little tiny manila envelope, like a little tiny baby one. But I'm walking home and I'm probably like in first or second grade and I pull a tooth out and I'm looking at it and I'm like this is swell oh, no. look at all awesome this is and the sidewalk was a little bit janky and I tripped and I watched a tooth fall into this lawn and so they had just aerated so I'm there putting my finger in all of these plugs to see if I can find it I was there for half an hour before the owner came out and goes what are you doing <laughs> and I said I dropped my tooth in this lawn and, and he's like well I don't think you're gonna find it and so I went home crying for the last two blocks, thinking, like, I just lost this tooth. It's awful. And my mom was really nice that day. And she's like, well, don't worry. The tooth fairy knows. You know, the tooth fairy will be able to find it with her um, signals. Tooth detector. Right. And she, I think I, she was really reaching for, like, what it was. Like, I think she wanted to explain to me how bats use sonar. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but for teeth, right? Yeah. Like, she, like, ah! <laughs> and wherever there's a, like a tooth that's out of a mouth, it blinks back. But I didn't con get that concept. And so that house is for sale right now. And I've thought about going to one of the open houses and being like, and if anyone finds a tooth in the lawn, it belongs to me. Parents need to get better at lying to their kids. Like, I'm going to mm. be really good at lying to my kids one day. I'm like, I, here's what I would have said. Oh, you know what? That happened to me when I was a kid too. But luckily I, I was able to get money. So I think the tooth fairy is able to figure it out. Cause it happened to me once I lost my tooth and I wasn't able to put it under my pillow, but I still got money from the tooth fairy. Did it also get lost in a lawn that was irrigate? Air, a lawn mower air, actually. A lawn mower. Mm, yeah. How do you know that it's still in one piece? I don't, but the tooth fairy knew the tooth fairy was able to do the math. And the tooth fairy didn't leave you money in that lawn where yeah. it was left. So yeah. then you why don't have they... to, you don't have to invent extra tooth fairy physics. You just have to say, yeah, you know what? The same thing happened to me once, but I still got money. So apparently the tooth fairy has some way of working this out. But then as a kid, I'd be like, well, then why do I have to put my tooth under the pillow? You've really set me up for a lot of subsequent questions. Yeah, I know. I've that's got just, a lot that's, of questions. That's, that's <laughs> merely tradition. That's merely tradition. It's just something that we do, just like praying before a meal or some other thing. We just do it because Dad, we do it. Dad, are you the tooth fairy? I am not. Are you sure? I'm positive. Do you see wings back here? Do you cut, see a little wand in my hand? Cut to 20 years no. later. <laughs> uh, well, it, it was great everyone could be here. My wedding's tomorrow. It's the groom's dinner. And... <sighs> I know that no matter what, the tooth fairy will always find me because if I am to lose a tooth, and this is some knowledge I'd like to just share with everyone because apparently my dad didn't tell, write down his story, and I want everyone to know that if you lose a tooth in the yard, whether it goes into some aeration or it ends up in a mower, the tooth fairy will still find you and give you money. Um, because tradition. Because of tradition. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Also, don't worry about most of the things on the registry. Santa's got that covered. <laughs> yeah. So if everyone would like to traditionally <laughs> pray with me before the dinner begins. I don't know why prayer was the example I <laughs> <Yeah>. came to. <laughs> Apparently I come from a tradition poor family. Yeah. We're like, oh, or going to your grandmother's house on Easter is our tradition. Until your grandmother passes away and we have to sell the house because no one really wants to live there. And then the tradition ends. What? <laughs> to visit grandma, we need to say it's tradition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we go. So what we used to do is like, it, for example, in the Gordon household, tradition was having frozen fruit cup on Christmas Day. My grandmother purchased it every year from some <laughs> shitty grocery store that sold frozen melon but like bald melon and here's the thing frozen fruit is awful because you're like it's like chewing on ice that's kind of flavored yeah. but it's like <laughs> yeah like watching a dog eat peanut butter is what it was in, in like for us adorable so, no no 
<laughs> not when it's human beings doing it. I was watching me like having half my mouth open going, arr, 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 arr. Oh, that's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. <laughs> but as, so even after we moved Christmas Day from my grandmother's house to another house because we were so big, my grandmother still brought frozen fruit. And I remember my grandmother died on Christmas Day. She had had a heart attack two weeks before. She's in the hospital. And then while my aunt Jonelle was getting Arby's, she's like, pull everything off. I'm done. And so they pulled everything off. And it was a slow decline. And then on Christmas Day, my grandmother passes away. I'm trying to understand. Did grandma say that? Or your aunt who was going to get Arby's said my, it as she no. was walking out the door? No, my like, grandma I'm said I'm going to get it. Arby's. Disconnect her. No. Exactly. <laughs> my aunt, like my grandma had been like, I want to, like, let's just, you know. Let, let me let me go, right. right? And my aunt was like, no, forget that. We're doing miracles in science. Like, stop it. I'm going to get some Arby's. I'm going to go get some Arby's, Arby's real quick. Arby's her last meal? No, my grandmother did not eat the Arby's. This is at the hospital. So she, her last meal was something hospital-based, I'm sure. <laughs> but my grandmother had had cancer in her nose. And when she got radiation, she lost all sense of taste. So everything she said tasted like styrofoam. So she merely ate to live. Hmm. You know, she so going to dinner at my grandmother's house after she had that radiation treatment was awful because she couldn't taste if the hamburger helper was really, really old. Mm. So she just knew that she wanted to Wasn't live able to, to see what the wheel of fortune was going to happen the next either, day. Huh? So my grandmother dies on Christmas Day and we all end up all like the family all comes to my house because we're still going to have Christmas. But this bummer Christmas since my grandmother died. Which my grandmother, by the way, probably loved because she loved being the center of attention. <laughs> so during this bummer Christmas, someone says, oh, there's no frozen fruit cup. And I can't remember which of my cousins said it, it was like, good. <laughs> Let Nobody it likes it. Let it Nobody die wants with her. It. <laughs> yep. This dies like, with her. Be like, we will remember grandma with the frozen fruit cup, but let's, why, why are we doing this? Why, why not have fresh fruit? We can do that now. We can get oranges any time of the year. Let's stop making this such a thing. And so it was, it was nice. Then at my grandmother's funeral, there was a bomb scare at the federal building. So they had to move her funeral. And so it ended up in the paper about like, oh, and the funeral of Alice Gordon had to be moved from the Presbyterian church. And so, again, my grandmother would have loved that. She was in the paper, yeah. like, not only with the obit, but also with this story about how her funeral had to be moved. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was behind that. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. Right. Yeah. There was some plotting going on. She called in that bomb threat. <laughs> the, you know, <laughs> humor in, in, the, in the face of uh, uh, existential tragedy. It seems to be the the best medicine that we have. There was a video that kind of went viral fairly recently from an Irish funeral. <laughs> I love this where video. this guy. So he he'd been dying from cancer, I think, or something. So he had known his his death was coming, mm -hmm. and so he, with I think the help of one of his sons, recorded audio of him like pounding on a the inside of a cask, going, "Hey, let me out, let me out, I'm no. down here." And, and so they played it no. at at the lowering in. To the ground as a joke, mm -hmm. and and the family kind of knew he was doing it. Part of the, some of them knew he was doing it. Okay. But there are clearly people who did not know that this was going to right. happen. I need to watch this. Right, but but they're all they're all laughing at it because it was consistent with his personality. Yeah, he was the kind of person that would do something like yeah. that, and I I'm, love that. I'm fucking still in here. <laughs> yeah. oh. And like they got the like oh. pound 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 noise. Oh, yeah. delightful. Yeah, yeah. my yeah. favorite joke when I was going through all this stuff is Adam would always be with me when we would go to my appointments and stuff. And the nurse always asks, um, you know, when they're taking you back, who do you have with you today? And I would say, oh, that's just my Uber driver. <laughs> 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 and, they, and they would just kind of look at me like, oh. And then I'm like, I'm oh, just kidding, it's my husband. And Adam had to hear this, I don't know, every time we went to the hospital. And so he would just go, yeah, I am the Uber driver. Like, he was just so over it by the end of it. I, da I dated a girl once who, um, she was very, very attractive. And so she was constantly getting attention from other men when we would go out somewhere. And every once in a while, one of them would ask the two of us, are you guys dating? And I would always say, oh, no, we're cousins. <laughs> and then I'd like... Tongue kisser right in front of him. <laughs> this is my sister, you know. 
Uh, I love when people mistake little things like that. My sister and I have been mistaken for husband and wife a few times because we both have the same last name and the same address on our ID. And so they're like, oh, is this a honeymoon? And my sister always looks over at me and gives me this, like, don't. I know you want to feed into this BS, but, like, don't. I'm not in the mood. And I'll be like, nope, it's a divorce. (laughs) Too young. That's like, oh, God. Um, I'd like to end this with telling you a story, and I want to know how you feel about this story. Okay. (laughs) Okay. When I was 19 years old, I went to a wedding in Las Vegas with my sister. And it was just the two of us who went down there because my dad was sick at the time. So my mom was taking care of him here in Fargo. But like, we want you guys to go to your cousin's wedding in Las Vegas. Represent gonna, the family. Yeah. We're going to let you go. It's you two eat a hotel room. You get all this fun stuff. And I'm like, that's friggin' sweet. So while we're down there, I find out that the second city, the greatest comedy institution in America has a new theater in las vegas so rather than going to all of the groom's dinner my sister and i make plans to go see a show at the second city so i had to go get the tickets so i reserve them online and i go get the tickets and my sister and i are riding in this cab and the cabbie's not saying anything but i weirdly recognize what's playing it's not the radio it's clearly he's got a cd in there and it was like woo 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 and I'm like, can I, excuse me, sir, what is, was this? And he goes, and then he turns around while still driving and tells me it's a soundtrack to Titanic. He was a drug addict 10 years ago and absolutely had like pissed all away his entire life and that his wife had left him and he hasn't talked to, he hadn't talked to his kids in years. And then someone gave him the soundtrack to Titanic and not the like Celine Dion, well, like just the score. Mm. And he says, but I have this in my cab. And whenever I drive, I listen to it. This has changed my life. I listen to it seven hours a day, seven days a week. This is the only thing I play. And then he like describes the scene. He's like, Rose arrives at the docks and she sees the grandeur of the Titanic. And she's walking up the, and for the next five minutes, he talks to me about how the score to Titanic is what is making him live for tomorrow. And he hasn't touched heroin since. Dang. He has a great relationship with his kids now. He's dating a wonderful woman who works at the Mirage. And it's all because of the score to Titanic. Shannon, <laughs> if someone asked you, what's the thing that got you through this? Do you associate, like, was it like watching Last Man on Earth on Netflix or what it is? Do you have something that you would tell someone just to fuck with them. <laughs> I seriously think it was ramen noodles. <laughs> like, I looked forward to that shit like it was crack. You should write to the company. I should. And just tell them that story. You might end up with, like, a, a lifetime supply of ramen noodles. And it would that. only cost them, like, a hundred bucks. Right. <laughs> I think we have the episode title. A lifetime supply of ramen noodles. I don't know. We'll see. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to donate $50 to the fuck cancer group in your name for Aww. being a guest. So just uh, we want to let you know that, That's too. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. I lo- have you. Are you familiar with that organization? No. They're I'm awesome. familiar with saying fuck cancer, but. Yeah. That's the name of their 501c3. Oh, it's dang. one of the only nonprofits in America that uses the F word as part of the like group that's great yeah they're awesome folks and so uh, thank you very much for coming back to jj meets world yeah. and having some fun with us and like l- let me ask my like leg hair question yeah because oh, you know for sure yeah oh good i'm an open book we ask the oh. questions on this show that the public demands yeah. answers for so hey, what you know, happened to your leg hair <laughs> we ask every guest and you're the first one to answer it <laughs> Um, uh, quick though so you you blogged about this too like Mm -hmm. i kept up to date with your blogs and so maybe someone wants to go and read that can they still find it yeah it's at www.crushing-cancer.com crushing-cancer.com yep and are you going to continue to update it or is like as things go on you're going to be like oh i wish i had called it like crushing just like you know crushing pie (laughs) recipes (laughs) 
<laughs> now I'm like, wow, I really worked myself into a hole here, didn't I? Um, no, I, I've been meaning to write a blog. It's been a while since I have, but I've been meaning to kind of update people. So I, I'll probably keep updating that. You could always turn it into a site for people who have enemies whose astrological sign is cancer. Oh. Do you want to crush a cancer? Yeah, yes. let's do this. Here's okay. what you do. Okay, find their address. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah. Is this someone own crushing cancer without the dash already? Like, no, I just preferred it <laughs> with a dash because who wouldn't want to put a dash where like a space would be? Right, like it's so hard. It's hard for me to decide where one word ends and the next word begins. I mean, because you could have been crushing answer. Right. See, that's mm-hmm. like license plates that people do. Yeah, crushing you know. can, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I just not a sir. sir. I love crushing cans. It like is in fun. those things, the little oh, like pull yes. down. I prefer crusher. using my hand. In your hand? Yep. Oh. And then smashing them against my forehead. Oh, okay. I'm kidding. I tried Do that once and it hurt really like, bad. V8, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Low sodium. <laughs> Not again. I always love seeing when someone tries to do it and it just doesn't crumple. Yeah, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. I tried it once just and that hits. was it. Just there's hits. that moment where they don't want to pull it away because they know that now there's a big yeah. red circle there and they're like, oh. oh yeah, Mike, everybody. you're supposed to drain the can first. Oh. <laughs> Oops. For a while, I had a bedside table that I needed to be about six inches taller and... I didn't know what to do, so I took a 12-pack of Diet Pepsi cans, and I put them underneath there strategically, oh. mm-hmm. and it lifted it up enough. They were cans from when Star Wars Episode One came out. Full cans? Full cans. Because they're, you know, they're, like, they're good. They sit there and like... So when I moved out of my house in 2002, I was like, oh, I forgot I had all these Diet Pepsi cans down here. Maybe I should try one. I oh. opened it, and it was awful. Gee... Yeah, it was a Queen Amidala can. What a shocker. And then I didn't keep any of them, but like, I wonder if they'd be worth money now today. I wouldn't be surprised. But it seems to me like everyone collects stuff Yeah, like that now. They're smart, right? They're like, well, we're not going to let another Star Wars toy thing go by. We'll buy everything and keep it in mint condition, and I hate that. Yeah, like Beanie Babies. Yeah. The Beanie Baby crisis of 1999. Dude, I have a whole tub in my basement. Do you really? You know, there's going to be so many people who really regret the whole Funko Pops thing mm-hmm. at some point. You know what those are? There's just little little, little figures that have massive heads. Oh, and yeah. And they, they make yeah, them of yeah, a million yeah. different things. And there are like tens of... Uh, hundreds of YouTube channels of people who just talk about Funko Pops and their background is always the thousands of dollars they've dumped into that. They're all still in their boxes stacked up and they think that these are really going to be worth something someday. I went to San Diego Comic Con so I could get this all silver version of Scrooge right. McDuck. Right. And then they're going to be like, oh, I should have not invested all of my time and money yeah. into these. It's not a collector's edition just because you put the words collector's edition on it. It's not? No. Oh, shh. Right. You know what there is a collector's market for? Weber grills. So if you have like a grandparent who has like a really old Weber grill, keep it because there is some Hmm. like collector's value to that because they change the design from time to time. That sounds like a big thing to collect. Yeah. Like, do you guys want to see my collection of Weber grills? I had to build a second garage for it. I would love that. (laughs) I think that that. If you've got a collection of Weber grills, please get a hold of us at jjmeetsworld.com. I would love to see them. Uh, all right. Anything else we have to talk about in this podcast? No, just that we're, I'm really excited that Shannon is back on the show. Yeah. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you for on. having me. Yeah. This is fun. Thanks for stopping out. And then are your earrings, what are, what are those? Is that wood? Yeah. Yeah. So when I lost my hair, uh-huh. um, I was like, I really want earrings because I never really wore earrings because I had hair that you mm. couldn't see my ears. And so Adam is so sweet. He bought me these earrings from Etsy. They're cool. Uh, they're wood. And um, now I wear them sometimes. Good story. <laughs> mm-hmm. Glad that's we ended good, on that. That's a great way to end on that one. <laughs> we ended on the earrings. Badoots. Really get people excited about listening to previous episodes. <laughs> A huge thanks to Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty for sponsoring this podcast. 
Folks, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, contact Natalie Deutsch today because Natalie Deutsch is not only a previous podcast guest, she's somebody who's going to care enough to sell your property for top dollar. She's also going to find you the best price possible if you're purchasing a new home. Last year on average, Natalie earned her clients $4,000 over list price on their homes and sold them faster than the market average. On average, Natalie's selling a home every 3.74 days. That's two homes a week. Those numbers don't lie. Find out why Natalie is one of the top agents in this entire market. Get a hold of her today, Natalie at HatchRealtyFM.com. You can also call 701-388-9338 or go on to LiveFargoMoorhead.com. That's LiveFargoMoorhead.com. Read all of her amazing reviews and then listen to her episode of JJ Meets World. Thanks again to Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed this episode of JJ Meets World and would like to help us continue to produce two new episodes every week, you can donate to our Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash JJ Meets World and donate today. Even as little as a dollar a month can go a long way. Visit our website at www.jjmeetsworld.com or hit up our social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the sites the kids are using these days. If you'd like to stay up to date on new episodes of JJ Meets World, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever you consume the podcast that you love. JJ Meets World is produced every week by Tucker Lucas. You can find out more about Tucker's work by checking out www.moonbasemaria.com. If you want to get in touch with your host with the most, go to linebenders.com, and you can find direct contact info for JJ. Imagine a world where Tucker is sitting in the hospital, and they're like, bad news, Tucker. It's... St- uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be bad it's gonna be bad you've got wiener disease where your whole body smells like wieners and like not good ones like real bad ones and the only way to cure it is to eat pickles what does Tucker do stay tuned